or will tell me whether my GitHub actions and workflows are working as expected. This was a recent post on LinkedIn that I did using exactly this dashboard that you see here. It caused uh, a lot of uh, interest, I gotta say. And this is why I was also asking Philip, Servus Philip for being here, to, uh, to come on stage, on the virtual stage, and actually show me what you've built. Because you've built something that, without much effort, gives you full end-to-end -end traceability of everything you do with your GitHub Actions and your GitHub Workflow. So what I would like to do, to be doing a two-part video. This one now is an overview of what you can do with the data once it's ingested. And the second one, and the link is in the description of this video, goes into more the technical implementation, how people can apply this. But um, Philip, thank you so much for being here. Maybe you just get started. And, and what have you built and, and what does this data allow you to do? Uh, thanks, Andy, for having me. So this, re uh, this dashboard here, it shows the health of my GitHub Actions, right? Um, in, in this configuration, I've, I've configured it to look at one repository. It's called Boomer Code. So this repository, is, it's, it's a sample project that I've written a while ago. It, it translates um, uh, text to remember the old Nokia phones when you had yeah. to type two, uh, three times to get a C and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this repository actually translates text into that kind of encoding. And it uses GitHub Actions to publish, as you see here, to publish uh, NPM packages. Mm -hmm. So looking back at the dashboard here, what we see here is we see for the main branch how many workflow runs, job runs, steps, and actions we had in the last seven days. Just to, to remind everybody what this actually means, a workflow run is represents this entire file here, which in this case is a publish workflow. A job is then one specific uh, action that is taken within a workflow. There could be multiple jobs that depend on each other. So usually you have more job runs than you have workflow runs. And every job then has several steps and every step uses a certain action, like mm -hmm. check out a repository or mm -hmm. publish something to NPM, for example, right? And you see here already some statistics about your repository, or, or in this case, about your main branch. Mm -hmm. And you see scrolling down here a bit, you also see the current health state of your main branch here. So here we have apparently five work, uh, four workflows, um, and one of them should be the published one is this here. And apparently the last run of publish has been successful, which is why this one is green. And we also see here uh, for workflows, jobs, steps, and actions, the average failure or success rate of, uh, of your uh, respective actions, right? And going down even more, we can even like do the same things for the workflows, the jobs, the steps, and the actions again, where we see, for example, that 100% of all the checkouts have been successful in my repository, right? But going to the jobs here, apparently the publish NPM uh, action that I have mm -hmm, mm -hmm. was only 0% successful in the last I seven days. There's, so, there's a little yeah. problem here. <laughs> yes, I think I have a problem in my repository, right? Yeah. And at the very bottom here, we already see the, the last abnormal logs here that I can uh, try, to, uh, try to click one um, and, and uh, go to my logs um, and see if I find something here. Cool. And also, as you're opening up this, this is all done through um, an open telemetry project that you've implemented. We go in the second video into more technical details. But yes. basically, this means while we're showing this here in Dynatrace as your backend, all this data is based on open telemetry traces and logs, that means everybody can really use this. Um, and we just show you today how this looks like in Dynatrace. Exactly, this is this is all pure open telemetry, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm running this query here to find the logs. And apparently here we had a process completed with exit code one. And I will find the surrounding logs of this. Mm -hmm. And I already see here that th there has been some errors from NPM here, 403. Um, a package version that is forbidden by your security policy. Um, so something seems to be wrong here. But also here it says you cannot publish over the previously published. So apparently I'm trying to publish the same version again. Um, so this is a, something that I see from the logs. 
those, as you just said, are pure open telemetry logs that have been automatically ingested as well. And I can then go down to open the trace here and try to dig a bit deeper and look at the actual trace of, of what was going on in this case. So here we see a trace that has a, it has a span here. It's called publish NPM. Mm -hmm. And when we go back to our YAML file, you actually see that this is the, mm -hmm. the job. this is the actual job that was failing here. Um, and I, it's pretty easy to see that there is apparently a step that is run here. It's called run. And when I dive deeper into it, um, I see that I can actually get a rather complex trace here. But let's stay on, on this node here for a second, on the job node. We already see on a very high level here that we have some specific attributes um, for, for this job run. We see, for example, that it failed. We see its name. We see its ID. We even get like a full link to the actual GitHub uh, job run. Um, and we also see that it was running on a Linux and on what uh, runner it was running, for example, right? And when we go one step down here, this is the actual step. So mm -hmm. this is the job, this one is the step. Um, and we see here again, the specific attributes that tell us that this is the step name um, of what workflow it's from, that it apparently failed. Mm -hmm. And also we see that it's a shell step, right? So when we go back to our YAML file again, we are talking actually about this step here. And we see like this is the run keyword, which basically just means we write any kind of script, any kind of shell script, and we just do an NPM publish here. So this is why it also appears as shell script here. And the real cool thing is that we can actually dive deep into this now, right? So we see that this is actually a script that's being run on the runner, and that there is actually like an NPM publish, um, and here the actual NPM command. Um, that is being executed, right? So we actually see into the step and wow. into the action, which is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And also to recap again, so you have enabled um, your open telemetry observability for your GitHub uh, repository. That means for every workflow, for every step, uh, you are collecting now your end-to-end -end traces, you have your logs and the way you analyzed it because you said you started in your dashboard on saying, hey, I have certain jobs failing. Actually, I have the NPM publish that fails all the time. You also started then looking into abnormal logs. I think you said these are logs that are of a state warning or error. Yes. Right? I think that was really good. And then from the logs, from those error logs in Dynatrace, at least you have the capability to say show surrounding logs. Then you see everything above and below from a time perspective in that trace. And then you jumped into the trace to really see what is actually happening and where you were calling the NPM uh, publish uh, program. Yeah? Exactly. Right. It's fantastic and it's amazing. To, and what I am fascinated about, I know we have, we, we get some type of observability from GitHub through the webhooks, but this is just like high level information when a workflow starts, when it's finished, but you are really diving deep here and generating distributed traces, not only for the, the workflows and the steps and the jobs and the actions, but also into the best script. Yes. Yeah. And, and we'll see a much more aggressive example of that in a second. <laughs> okay. It's kind of scary. Yeah, um, okay. Let's do it. But, let's, let's see. But we'll go there from actually a second dashboard I want to show you that was not in your teaser LinkedIn post yet. Yeah. Um, so um, let's close this for a second here. Um, this is again, uh, uh, it, it's a separate dashboard. It's called consumption performance. And I've again uh, configured it to only go to this one repository. And this is not so much to actually track down um, uh, specific errors, but rather of where am I spending my time. Um, when you're using GitHub hosted runners, usually um, it's free, but you only have a certain number of runners available. Or if you have hosted runners that you already you host yourself, right? You don't have infinite computing power. So you may want to so you may want to optimize your GitHub actions in a way of not using unnecessary um, uh, consumption, mm -hmm. uh, use unnecessary uh, power here. So um, computing power. So here you see the workflow consumption over time over the last seven days, right? So we see, for example, here that on in this one hour interval, I've used 21 minutes of um, computing power for this uh, repository alone, which is quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And I also see here 
the rate limit of the GitHub token, actually, which is, which was a fun experiment to do. So you usually have a uh, embedded GitHub token, an automatic GitHub token that your actions interact with or that they use when they interact with the API. And you see how the rate limit develops over time here. So to see also here if you have a problem. And then down here, you see um, the consumption by repository, by branch, by trigger. So we see, for example, if it's a push or something scheduled or if it was a pull request by actor, which is mm -hmm. in this case just me and, and the bot, mm -hmm. um, like which actor actually causes a lot of runs. And also, again, by workflow, job, step, and action. So here you see, for example, that in the last, uh, in, in the last seven days, um, I used a full almost 12 minutes of only checking out the repository, mm -hmm. um, which is quite a lot. And this is cross uh, on the main, uh, on all branches of uh, this repository. And I've promised you, Andy, to go into something more aggressive in a more mm -hmm. aggressive trace, right? So, so let's look at this one. Um, this, is a, it, this is the Renovate bot that I host uh, myself on, on GitHub. So in, in the repository itself, it uh, um, is the, the, the Renovate bot running. And we see here, again, that it has the Renovate um, uh, job. And we can quickly try to find that in the repository as a Renovate YAML. And it's not very complicated. It's just like once every hour, it runs the Renovate GitHub action. And I give it a repository, uh, give it a, uh, the repository ID and a token to do this, right? So this is basically the Renovate bot hosted in your GitHub Actions. Going back to the trace, this is also what we see here. We see here the Renovate GitHub Action, and we see um, that looking at the, the the attributes again, that this is actually a JavaScript action. That means this is some Node script that is running. Uh, that is really renovate, and we also see its version, and that it was successful apparently. A cool side effect also is that um, this implementation automatically um, strips all sensitive information from all attributes, span names, and logs. Mm -hmm. So you see here the token I've just talked about has yeah. here been automatically replaced. So it's very easy to when you build something like this and open telemetry for GitHub that you by accident capture something sensitive that is a secret, right? Mm -hmm. um, like here, a token, and they are automatically redacted um, from all the observability data that is leaving your runner. Um, but looking now at the children of this, we see that, as I said here, it's talking, it's a JavaScript um, uh, action, and we see that it's actually really like, yeah, it's calling a node script mm -hmm. somewhere. And we see that is, yeah, it's just like a node script, but we have children of this again. And we see that this node script actually calls Docker run. So this is actually not really that much of a JavaScript action. The JavaScript action is just basically wrapping a, a Docker command. So, and the really scary thing here, or the fun thing here almost here is, we can even look inside the Docker container. Uh -huh. So we see that the Docker run, like inside the Docker container, we have a renovate entry point, and that's a shell script. And we can just keep on looking. We see that this shell script apparently XX at some point, there is a Docker entry point, there's another XX, there's a dumb in it, which is an awesome name for a script. Um, and then there is, it calls an executable that is, that is called renovate inside the Docker container. And this executable is really just, again, a node script um, which is the actual implementation finally of Renovate. And we can then jump into this and because the, the Renovate implementation actually has open telemetry built in, not mm -hmm. auto instrumented, but manually instrumented. So there are some manual spans that are being into, uh, that are being emitted from Renovate itself. And we see that they fold in seamlessly here. This is one of them. They just call it run. And you see that this is coming from the regular Node.js um, mm -hmm. open telemetry. And then we see further that it's apparently configuring, discovering, and doing something that's called repository, whatever that is. And we can just look into this. Yeah. And we see that it, it is, again, on the one hand, doing GET requests yeah. and POST requests, but also doing some 
apparently just some again okay, git calls mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to to do some of its work. And this way, when I close this, you see the proper uh, waterfall here again. You see where you're actually spending your time also in your renovate and uh, or in your own custom Docker actions, uh, which makes them easier to debug or to actually troubleshoot when something is also failing somewhere deep inside. Yeah. And Philip, I need to stress again that the way you've implemented this, we'll cover this in the second part of the video. Um, if you go back to your workflow, your renovate workflow that you just had opened up earlier in the tab, there's nothing you, need, you did here, right? You just used a regular renovate bot GitHub action. Yes, there, there is there is an instrumentation missing here, and this is what we will do in the in the second uh, video, right? Um, the instrumentation is actually missing here, and we'll look at that and how to how to actually get that trace. This is just a plain renovate here. Perfect. Cool. And then maybe to close this one, um, so you showed us how you are analyzing the performance uh, of a single repository. We focus now on your Boomer, but I know that many organizations and also you, you have many different Git repositories, and this also works across your complete enterprise or all of your private repositories. Exactly. Uh, I've just uh, un unselected here the repository and selected all of them automatically. So this is all the repositories that I have configured to emit uh, metrics, logs, and traces. Mm -hmm. And you can even get a drill down, like which repository is actually causing uh, or consuming most of your uh, computing power. And you see that there is an obvious yeah, uh, bad yeah. guy in here, yeah, for example. Yeah, yeah. And you also see like even across the actions, um, uh, you see, uh, uh, you see per action cross repository how much computing power you use, and for me it's apparently the code QL. Mm -hmm. So apparently m most of my computing power goes into code QL in in my case. Yeah, and I think that's very interesting because you know while um, well everything somebody needs to pay obviously for for this compute um, if you're using. GitHub and the free credits, uh, those credits will not last forever. And if you're an enterprise, you also pay for things. And then doing these hotspot analysis, what you're doing here at scale across all of your repositories really allows you to, to then optimize individual actions, individual steps, and then have a huge impact in a, in a positive way um, for you across the enterprise. Cool. Hey, um, Philip, this, uh, what we want to make sure is folks, uh, all of this, is video number one so we wanted to show you what you can do with the data that is pure open telemetry uh, we are using dynatrace here but as we said because it's pure hotel uh, you may also you know analyze this in some other ways and then some other tools but i think we showed some of the additional capabilities in dynatrace with uh, from a log looking at the surrounding logs going to your traces analyzing all of these traces and logs uh, not only from one repository but across multiple repositories. The Git repository that makes all of this possible is also linked in the video description. But uh, I think now we are actually ready to close this session and then we go into video number two where we go into the technical details. See you in the next video, Philip. <laughs>